Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. So, I want to talk to you about this photo and I'm going to show you the entire workflow on how I did this photo. I'm starting a new series called The Photographer, where the idea is that I'm going to, you know, take basically self portrait or portrait of friends or family that are with me taking photos, where I want to show like an epic uh, landscape and a portrait at the same time. It's actually a much harder than I thought and I just wanted to share my first impression and I'm going to improve the workflow because I'm going to start using speed light flash to get an even more dramatic look but for now I'm in the south of France I didn't take my flash with me so I'm doing with what I got and let me show you how I got this photo and how it all started uh, I arrived oh by the way before we continue, I just want to remind you that this is going to be done with Lightroom and Photoshop. If you don't own Lightroom or Photoshop and you go to my website, photoshop.com, my gear, for a few more days, you can get 20% off for the entire year on Lightroom and Photoshop. That is going to be $7.99 instead of $9.99. And uh, the offer is going to stop any day now. It says August, but they, Adobe just informed me they will stop the uh, any day. So check it out. You know, for the price of two coffee, you can get Lightroom and Photoshop uh, every month for $7.99. That is so cool because you get all the updates, you get all the Creative Clouds, which is the library module and all this good stuff that you get with Creative Cloud. So anyway, so we arrived uh, last night at the Abbey de Sonanc, uh, which is a uh, very famous abbey. It's, it's, it's been on my you know bucket list as a photographer for, for many years because... It's got a lavender feel in you know in front, and as the expert, the international expert of shooting lavender fields when the lavender is not ready, I had to come there six weeks earlier, of course, before lavender. So anyway, so that's the regular shot, you know, and I wanted to um, do some bracketing when I really have like an an epic view like this. I like to do bracketing, and so that's what I did. Uh, I started doing some retouching on this one. And, but that's not what I want to show you. What I want to show you is how I got uh, my photo. So this is uh, basically uh, the, uh, you know, the normal exposure. That's the underexposure. And that's the normal exposure. Now, that's actually, that's the exposure that I kind of like the most. So if I just wanted to do a regular landscape, you know, I would, you know, open up the shadows. And now on this one, and this is something that I've, that I've tried recently, which really works well. Instead of bringing down the highlights and getting a very... Uh, a lot of contrast and detail in the sky, I'm going the opposite. I'm leaving it in the middle, and I'm going to do my blacks and my whites. Now, the colors are very boring because my white balance is totally off, but if I go to shade and boost, you know, make it much warmer, it starts to be more interesting. And that's a cool landscape, you know. I would add some contrast, I would add some vibrance, some saturation, and, you know, maybe crop it because this part here is not very nice. Uh, also, what, what I do usually is uh, let, you see that's the rule of third i like to have maybe a little bit more of that here the whole abbey to be on that line so that's kind of cool and um but that's not what i want to show you what i want to show you is what i did first is i got uh, my uh, daughter-in-law to stand on the wall uh, so that I could get a sense of how I was going to shoot this so let me show you some of the overexposed so first she was standing on the right and uh, I didn't like that so much, so uh, I moved around and uh, I tried to get closer to her. I didn't like that either, because you know you want to be able to see the uh, the abbey, you want to be able to see the lavender field. Uh, so that's I, every time I was doing HDR, I'm just going to show you the overexposed photo. Uh, I didn't like that shot because you know too much wall, you don't see enough the lavender field. She's standing, you know, uh, behind. There's a lot of things behind her, so then I moved. A little bit to the left, it was still not good. There's still too much stuff behind her, too much wall. We don't see enough the lavender field. And then what I got this idea because, I mean, you know, I was shooting by hand. Uh, so the uh, the normal exposure, let's see if you press I, uh, the normal exposure was 1 25th of a second, so that's fine. But the underexposure was 1 500th of a second, that's fine behind. But the overexposure was 1 30th of a second, and that gets a little tricky. So on my Sony, I activated the um, uh, the stabilizer, the 5x stabilizer, to be sure that on the overexposed photo, I would still be sharp, and uh, and I was. So that's very important. If you've got you know uh, stabilization on your lens or in your camera, you got to activate it, but only only when you're not using a tripod. So then what I did is because on the Sony you can tilt the screen, I started tilting the screen and putting the camera very high up well not on that shot but on this shot and i actually retouch this one let me reset it so you see what i mean uh, 
And by putting it really up, uh, I could see a lot more of the lavender field, you see? So I was holding all the way up to my arms with the screen tilted so I could see what I was doing. So that's like about the eyes of uh, the, th you know, the, s the height of my eyes. And that's all the way with my arm stretched. You see how we see more of the lavender field? So I really like that. So th uh, then I, you know, got her to move a little bit more around, but I realized that she's really behind all these mountains. So I told her to move more in the center. Actually, I moved myself around the center and there I got the shot. The problem is that I'm tilting down because I'm moving. I have the camera all the way up, uh, you know, looking down at her so I could see the lavender field. But now my, you see how the, uh, the whole thing is crooked. So we're gonna have to fix that. So finally, uh, I got, let me show you. Th so that's a shot that I really liked with her. I thought it was better to put her behind uh, the abbey so she's so s that her whole body is on the sky. I thought that would work well. And then I, sh I and I said, okay, I explained her how to do it. And I, I basically told her to ho how to hold the camera. And I went myself up on the wall. Uh, you know, I went myself on the wall and I tried different poses. And uh, the one that I really liked, I think, at the end was this one. I tried, that's uh, a regular version. That's actually a little bit of retouching in a raw HDR, just on a single raw file, not on an HDR. But finally, the one that I picked uh, to work with is this one. That's the one I show you at first. I don't know, I'd like more my, you know, the. I, I'm taking a photo of well of the shot. I think it's more interesting. And so that's the fully uh, retouch version and that's the, 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 the original raw file. So I'm gonna take the original raw file. So you see it's, I took the normal exposure at the end. I didn't even take the um, the um, the bracketed, or I didn't do an HDR. I just simple Lightroom tutorial. Uh, but I did a few tricks on this one that I don't usually do. So I put up the shadows, did my whites, holding on the Option key, make sure I'm not burning anything. I did my blacks, holding on the Option key, having a little bit of black. And um, I don't touch the highlights for now because I want to have a diffuse sky. And I'm going to go to shade. And I'm going to add a lot of warmth and magenta to this shot. Something like this. I'm going to add a lot of uh, contrast, vibrance, and saturation. So that's my basic setup. Now, because I made the whole photo very warm, uh, and actually maybe do a little minus clarity here. I'm going to take, uh, first let me crop this photo. Oh, actually, before we crop it, we have to solve the fact that the lines are not straight. So honestly, the best way to do this is to go right away to the uh, upright function and take guided. I want to make sure that this line here, you see, is straight. So I click and drag. And I want to make sure that this stays straight. So I click and drag. See how that one line is straight and the other one is not? And boom, it makes the whole thing kind of more straight. I wanted this two bling to be straight. So then I'm going to take the crop tool. I'm going to crop here. I'm going to crop there. And remember, this is a 44 or 46 million pixels file. And I want to make sure maybe that uh, the rule of third, you see that I'm here, something like this. And, uh, and voila. So now I got my framing. I got my wise balance more or less. Now it's time to do some magic. So first of all, I'm going to create a linear gradient. But this time, I'm going to add a bit of blue just to bring back a bit of blue and maybe lower a little bit the exposure, just a little bit, okay? And usually I really want to have a diffuse sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to diffuse the sky by lowering the clarity. So on that sky, I'm lowering the clarity, I'm adding a bit of blue, and I'm making this a little darker. Three for the price of one. Then I'm going to make an another one here, but on this one, I'm going to go directly to clarity, and I'm going to boost the clarity, and I'm going to uh, make it much darker. So I want this to be really sharp, okay? I think the photo needs a lot more vibrant. So I'm gonna put a lot more vibrance, maybe add a bit more yellow. Yeah, a little more yellow to it. And, um, okay, and you just play around back and forth. You see, on my original retouched, I, uh, yeah, I had much darker sky. So much more, so what I'm gonna do, I can take back by, I can take actually another linear gradient, make another one, Go to exposure. When you choose a setting here, everything comes down to zero except what you just picked. Uh, and do some exposure. I like that. Now I want to enhance the, uh, I think I want to get my blacks a little darker, my whites a little brighter. 
and uh, I want to enhance a little bit the sky. Actually, the, s the sun was not here on the right. So I'm going to fake it. I'm going to take a big circle, then I'm going to make it here to the limit of my body. Uh, and I'm going to make sure that invert mask and feather is all the way on. I'm going to go here and take exposure. And I'm going to boost the exposure and add some yellow to it. And maybe some minus clarity. So we have a really diffuse sky. I want to make sure I'm not on the grass, I'm not on anything but the sky. And that's just a little cool trick to make sky a little more interesting. You see it makes the... And, um, okay, I think I'm going to crop the photo even more because the original one, I think I cropped it more so that the rule of third is, you see how this is like a golden triangle? So that's kind of on me. And uh, I think I'm going to add even more saturation. I really want this to be really like saturated. So you see the original photo is actually, let me see, I had 9,744 in in white balance. And here I am at 11,000, so I'm much more yellow. So 9,700, but I was more magenta, something like this. So now that, that sky is a little too much. So, you know, it's you just go back and forth, back and forth until you get the look that you want, uh, which is really cool. Voila. Now the problem is that when you type this, when you do this type of portrait, you see I'm pretty sharp, but then the whole ABI on this one is kind of blurry, a little bit blurry because I focused on me, and uh, because I was doing HDR by hand and I couldn't be on a tripod, I c I could only be at like I think I was really uh, like at f4.5, so that's why. But I don't really care because you know you still get the feeling that th this is a photographer taking a photo you know on a on a nice land uh, on this one i think i'm gonna go to the camera calibration and see what camera landscape is going to give me now i don't like it so i'm going to go back to a adobe standard and i can play around with this you know maybe add a bit of uh, magenta in the shadows even more uh, you know maybe add a bit of make things a little more red or orange you know here in the, in the red primary and uh, yeah basically that's kind of that's that let me see how was the original one I mean it's it's different from this one I think this one is a little yeah the colors are not exactly the same there's a bit more magenta and I think the whole thing is a little darker something like this but anyway I really enjoyed doing this kind of photos and I want to show you the whole workflow because there's, there's a little bit trick to it it's really a, a matter of uh, you know taking the time to take the right composition because when you start when you want to mix a portrait and landscape you know you have to think in terms of the portrait you have to think in terms of landscape and i really like that and i hope uh, this inspires you to do some portrait and landscape photography uh, last but not least on this one I i'm going to do my sharpening so because it was shot at 100 iso i'm going to put the sharpening around 90 my masking around 50 remember masking anything which is black i'm holding the option key to show you here is not going to get sharpened and maybe 10 of noise reduction because it always brings back a little bit of noise. And voila. And usually what I would do is I would look some other photos for about 10 minutes and come back to it and see if it's too pink, too magenta. I love the magenta look. I love that sunset look. Voila. I hope you like this. Also, The Hollywoodans is out. So if you pre-ordered it, please watch it. And if you can leave me a review, that'd be great. More I get reviews, more I can get some attention from the iTunes store. I already get, started getting some really nice reviews. So thank you very much for that. And if you did not pre-order it, well, uh, I invite you to see this movie. It's a movie that I did with some friends on, on Hollywood and on reaching your dreams. Last but not least, uh, check out my Photoshop for Photographer course. It's been out for a few weeks now, I'm getting a lot of great reviews. If you really want to go deep into Photoshop, if you want to master Photoshop, it's an eight hours course with 66 videos, and it will just might do just that. Uh, I got you know really really some good reviews on it. I think this is the my the f most complete Photoshop course I ever did, and uh, I'm really proud of it. So check it out. Voilà, mesdames et messieurs. I will see you tomorrow.